Steven Garner here. Welcome to Next Q. I help leaders solve problems with the power of their imagination. I call it my cues for great leadership. One of the things that I'm very passionate about doing is empowering millennials to go to the next level in their professional experience. And what pains me the most is when I see senior level leaders not investing the time and energy in helping their inexperienced talent to grow to the next level. I have to share with you a real life story. I was working at a company and my fellow senior director was giving me this scathing report, this critique about their inexperienced millennial talent on their team. And I thought to myself, well, aren't you a senior level director? Shouldn't you be providing instruction and wisdom that will help them to get better? I mean, we're not talking about the type of talent that was difficult, unwilling to learn, that didn't have good character, that did not put forth the effort. We're talking about talent that was willing to do whatever was necessary to grow to the next level. So I just want to give you that context so you understand we're talking about someone who had the heart for learning. However, the director did not want to put energy and effort into their development because they themselves didn't have two things, the patience and the skills to help them to grow. It's funny when you see these situations because you think to yourself, at least I do, well, don't you remember when you were once in their shoes? Can't you just do the same things someone did for you, right? Well, today I wanna to share with you my three empowerment cues. So listen very closely because you have to understand that if you want your team members, especially when they are inexperienced to grow and go to the next level, you have to empower them. And if you don't have the skills to do that today, I'm gonna to share with you three cues that I have used to help my direct reports and my team members who would inexperienced millennials grow to the next level. So this story goes on. At the time, this director and I, we shared the same supervisor. And so my boss came to me and said, hey, I have this individual who would like to continue to work here, but we don't have any place to put them, and I know you need someone on your team. And I said, sure, and I recognized right off the bat that this person was inexperienced because my boss very clearly articulated to me, they don't have all the skills that you're looking for. However, here's the key, they have the character and they have the willingness to learn, and that's all I needed to hear. And they have the work ethic, let me add that to it. I can train skills, but I can't train the will. So if your millennial talent does have the desire to learn and grow, invest the energy into helping them to grow. So here are my three cues. The first thing that you have to do, now this is all about empowerment. So that means that you have the power, you have the ability to help them to grow because you are ahead of them in your professional journey. The first thing that I wrote down is delegate your executive authority to empower decision making. Now, when I refer to executive authority, I mean giving them those micro responsibilities, not these big opportunities, these micro responsibilities to exercise authority. So you do have to invest energy and effort into patiently teaching them how to manage the authority that you give them, but you're doing it on a small scale. Now you're asking me the question, well, why is it on a small scale? Simply because they're gonna make mistakes, right? But you can minimize the impact of the mistake when it's smaller. But at the same time, you're doing something very special for them. You're teaching them how to appropriately make decisions using power that you have given to them. Because when they're in a situation when they have to deal with something on the bigger scale, now because they have practice on a smaller scale with your tutelage, with your, your teaching and your instruction, they are more confident about exercising that executive authority. Micro opportunities, one by one, little by little, and every decision builds upon their wall of confidence. This helps them to feel empowered, giving them those micro opportunities. The second cue is speak power language to combat 
discouragement. Now you probably already figured this out because once they make a mistake, they're going to start thinking neg negatively about themselves and then they're going to start to feel like they can't succeed. It happens to the best of us. And so sometimes failures in performance is simply amplified by our inner critic. We tell ourselves that we can't do any better. We start to believe the negative narrative that we create in our minds. So the power of a leader who is seeking to empower and experience millennial talent is speaking words to counteract that negative narrative. Now understand the power of words for a second because words create a mental picture. So if a person is speaking negatively about their performance, what they're going to do right after that is not be compassionate about who they are. They're going to be so critical and so detrimental to their success that their mental picture of who they are is going to cause them to act poorly. This is why it's so important as a leader to speak positive power language because your words are now entering to their mind a different mental image. Okay, now I'm not talking about hyping someone up. I'm, I'm not talking about being uh, sermonic and, and saying a lot of things that get, gets them emotionally roused. I'm talking about being constructive, being specific about what they can do to succeed and then you invest energy into helping them to do that. But you need to be very specific, okay? And now when they listen to you because they know you're the leader, you have the power, you've done this before, you have the experience, you're now speaking positive language into their mind and now their mental picture is changing. All right, so this is really important. That's why if you see failure, you can't just be so critical right away. Okay, so listen, one of the reasons why young and experienced talent believe that they can't succeed is because they haven't heard anyone speak anything contrary to their own thinking. They haven't had enough experience to even believe that, hey, I can do this. And so this is why positive power language is so important. It is a countermeasure against negative thoughts, which ultimately turns into negative actions. Third cue, teach them how to use the power of their imagination. So each of these build on each other, right? So first of all, you have given them the executive authority to make small decisions, micro opportunities. Secondly, you're speaking power language to help them to change their mental image of themselves so that they don't start to create this failure narrative. Now, thirdly, you're teaching them to harness the power of their imagination. And this is what I do. I help leaders and individuals solve problems with the power of their imagination. So listen, one of the reasons why some millennials fail is because they don't know how to raise their level of initiative. And the reason for that is because they haven't learned how to take risks. And so they have this fear of risk taking. And experts believe that this started in childhood because some parents are so overprotective. They don't give their child opportunities to take risks. So they see risks as a threat to their success. They don't know what to do. But mistakes are not a measurement of failure. It's a measurement of progress. In fact, I, I, I wrote down this quote from John Wooden that I think is so powerful. He says, if you're not making mistakes, then you're not doing anything. You got to let that sink in for a minute. I'm positive that a doer makes mistakes. So, so the key here is now you need to get them to reverse their image of what a mistake is. And how do you do that, okay? How do you do that? Because what it's going to do is help them to be confident in the future when they're trying to do something they have never done because they're inexperienced, right? And they're working based on that mental image that they have created in their mind based on the words that they are speaking, that self-talk. And so what do you do to get them to change their mental image? Okay, well, you have to get them first to use their imagination to think about worst case and best case scenarios. Now, you've heard people say, hey, when you come into work every day, 
you have to expect the worst and hope for the best. All right. Yeah, that's the first part of it. That's how you, that's the philosophy. But then how do you bring that into fruition? Well, you have to help them by practicing. You have to role play. And this is what I do. I put them in a situation and we go back and forth on what decisions need to be made. We act out the scenario. So sometimes it can be a, this can be a fun thing. It just depends on the person. I give them instructions. I let them decide on what should be done. And see, what this is doing is giving them a mental reference to what the future will look like. And once they have an idea, okay, here's the scenario. Here's how it should go. And then second, what I do is I help them to imagine the outcome based on the decision that they have made. This is called practicing without pressure because we're going back and forth. We're, we've created a scenario. We're, we're speaking through it. We're looking at the possible pitfalls, the dangers that they will encounter or potentially encounter. Who knows? And because we're practicing without pressure, now they have this mental reference in their imagination. So when they get into the real situation, they now have the confidence because they have a mental reference that they can revert back to because we practice together. So this is why the imagination is so powerful as a leader and you have to teach them how to use it when they're not under pressure. Listen, those are my three cues to help empower millennials to go to the next level. If you want more cues from me, visit my website, nextcues.com. I encourage you to like, share, and subscribe. Again, I'm Steven Garner. Take your cues from me and live a great life. Next cue.